Sometimes cheap ordinary tent pegs aren't good for big tents or even small ones in bad weather. One answer is to use snow or sand pegs. They're wide shaped triangular pegs that have more grip in the soil. I got some at a flea market however there wasn't enough of them really to use well with a big tent so I bought some off the internet. It was a set of GDR or Oldish German tent poles, pegs and cord all in one bag. The pegs were just what I wanted. Of the ten poles two of them weren't any good. To preserve the wood I used linseed oil and to get to the sections inside the connectors I used a toothbrush and after a little thought and not wanting to spend any money I decided to use two old corks to use as base plates. The advantage of using the corks were a they were cheap and I had them and b they were easy to get out if they broke using your standard pocket knife. Having cannibalized the last two poles I now have nine poles that I put together in any configuration I like from nine poles to two. Wearing a plastic bag on your head will keep your head dry for a while until it gets wet and sweaty. Wearing a cotton hat on your head will keep it dry until the hat gets soaked then your head gets soaked. One way around it is to use some Fjall Raven Greenland wax on top. It's really quite simple. You take some of the Greenland wax and rub it in the area that you want to waterproof and you keep on rubbing till it has a nice white waxy covering. Now you use a commoner garden hair dryer to melt the wax into the fabric. It doesn't make them waterproof forever, but what it does do is make them showerproof. One of the disadvantages of repeatedly hammering in poles is that the wood split. However, there is a quick and easy way around this problem. First of all, find a piece of tube about the same diameter as the dowel you're going to use for the post. Then cut off a square collar. Next, trim the end so it's slightly smaller and the collar has a chance to slip on. Now hammer on the collar. Eventually you won't be able to hammer it any further. The problem comes when you try to hammer the stake into the ground. The metal ruins any wooden or rubber mallet. The answer is to use the remaining tube as a hammer to push the collar down. This gives us a section of wood that as it's hammered will spread out. It'll keep the collar intact and save the mallet from any damage. Some people collect stamps or beer mats. Others collect knives. But for me a knife is a tool. This is one I got quite a while ago but I've never really used. Although the blade is good and it locks. The hook on the saw I don't like. So what I'm going to do is modify the knife and get rid of the hook. Most knives are made of steel and steel is tempered in other words it's heat treated so if you start to work on the knife using high temperatures you're going to change the temper of the steel which will make it less effective in the field. Before I saw the blade I'm going to clamp it in a wet sponge to try and keep the heat transfer and therefore the damage to a minimum. 
Well, we've got rid of the point, but the job's not finished. We need to smooth off this area here. We're going to use a hand file and every so often just soak it with water. The big decision is because here the blade is a little bit thinner. Do we file it down substantially or do we leave it as it is? What I am going to do is get rid of this slight bump here so we have a reasonable curve. Now, after a few minutes work, I've got a knife that I'm very happy with, a knife that I'm going to use in the field. The knife folds up and there are no dangerous hooks to tear clothing and equipment. This one is a great little knife for in the field. However, it has one problem. The edges on the back are rounded and I don't particularly like using the sharp side of the blade. So what I'm going to do is modify this section here just to square off the edges. Again, I'll keep it wet. I'll use hand tools. Okay, I've got some paper to stop the blade being scratched. I'm going to use a hand file here and take off as little metal as possible. Okay, I've made some adjustments using the vise. Now I shall continue. The smooth side of the file. Now, the coarse emery paper. It works. So what I'll do now is finish off the job, getting rid of any scratches that I don't want. So what I'll also do is put some nail varnish on the scraped area to stop it oxidising, ready for next time I need it. Jobs are good. Un. The modification is made and it works. If you've got kit that you're not satisfied with, modify it.